When Bani Sray was first rediscovered it was thought to date back to the 13th or 14th century due to its refined carvings. However, inscriptions later found at the site place its consecration very precisely on 22nd of April, 967 AD. It is the only major temple not to be built by a king. The construction is attributed to Yajnabaraha, a courtier and king's counselor. The temple was expanded and further built upon in later years and remained in use until at least the 14th century. The temple was rediscovered in 1914, but the site was not initially cleared. A few years later however, when a French politician and novelist stole some remains from the site, the ensuring attention renewed interest in the area and the restoration process began. The restoration was the first really successful use of anastylosis, the process of using original architectural elements of the building to restore it, a method which was then adopted for the restoration of many other Angkorian monuments. The temple faces the east, with a gate at the start of a causeway which leads to three enclosures. The causeway has the remains of corridors on either side. The two outer enclosures, parts of which have collapsed or been removed to museums, both depict scenes from Hindu mythology. The reddish-colored sandstone, which gives Bani Sray its nickname of the Pink Temple, is soft and can be carved like wood. This helps explain the masses of ornamental decoration all over the building. Virtually every available surface features intricately portrayed stories and motifs. However it is the inner enclosure housing the two libraries and the sanctuary which features the most elaborate carvings. The temple is predominantly dedicated to Shiva, and so many of the carvings are centered around his figure, although Vishnu does also feature heavily in the buildings on the south side. Banti Sray is really quite a different experience to many of the other Angkorian temples. Here the demonstration of wealth, power and the veneration of the gods is apparent in detail and intricacy, rather than in the sense of enormity and gravitas of Angkor Wat or Bayon. It provides an interesting counterpoint for those willing to go a little bit further in their journey of understanding and experiencing the kingdom of Angkor.